Hi Alpha, can you schedule a meeting with John Doe on July the 1st? Make.com has recently released AI agents to their automation platform. In this video, I'll show you how to set these up and how to make multiple AI agents work together as a team. Now, setting up multiple agents can become a bit tricky. So before you start, I recommend having a look at this short practical guide recently released by OpenAI, describing some different setups and pros and cons. Now, make.com hasn't really made it easy to set up multiple agents, but as you will see from this video, it can be done. We'll be using the manager approach as described in this document, which means there will be one manager agent that we communicate with, and this manager agent will delegate its tasks to one or several sub agents, creating a, a team of agents essentially. Okay, here we are in make.com and we're gonna be setting up a multi-agent system. We'll start with using one scenario per agent. So we'll create one scenario for the manager agent. I'll name this scenario manager agent. Um, what we'll do then is we'll add a make AI agent and choose run an agent. We can then from here create the agent and choose our model. I use OpenAI 4.0 mini and call this my manager agent. Uh, the system prompt, I'll keep this very simple. You can extend this later on, but we can just simply say, you are a manager agent. <clears throat> capable of uh, receiving tasks and delegating to um, several sub agents. So we'll save this um, system prompt and we'll save this agent. Now this is a very basic setup. Now to understand how agents work, it's important to understand that the tools that you can assign to the agent are essentially scenario calls. So we're gonna give this agent a tool, which is the sub-scenario to call. Now this sub-scenario doesn't exist yet, so we're gonna make that first. So we'll go back to our um, scenarios and then create a new scenario called sub-agent. <clears throat> Okay, from here we'll be creating our sub agent. So again, we'll choose make an AI agent and run an agent. Then we'll create an agent and choose our open AI model. Then we'll call this our sub agent. And as a system prompt, I prepared a little prompt that will trigger it to ask a question back to the manager agent. Now, the system prompt here is your sub agent capable of receiving instructions from a manager agent. The answer that you'll provide to any question will always be 42. You will not answer without receiving a password. The password is Galaxy. This will trigger a question back to the manager agent when asked the questions and the sub agent will ask for a password. This way we can prove that the threat ID works because it have context of the conversation history. We'll save this prompt and agent so the next thing that we need to do is set our scenario in and outputs. So we'll go to scenario in and outputs and we'll add two scenario inputs. One will be the message coming from the manager agent. Um, this will be a multi-line required text. And the next one is the threat ID. Now the threat ID can be a single line required text. Now you see a description field here. This is actually important because this instructs the AI agent calling this scenario, what is expected from this input, these inputs. So for the threat ID, we can say, um, generate a unique threat ID. Um, and only um, create a new ID when starting to work on a, on a new task with sub -agents. So these are the scenario inputs. We'll save these. And once we've set them for the scenario, we're going to, we're going to pass them to the AI agent. So we'll go here to threat ID for AI agent. Then we'll choose these brackets up here, and then we can find our scenario inputs that we just created. Uh, we choose threat ID for this one. And in the message to this AI agent sub agent, we call the created input of message. 
then we'll save this in our AI agent. Then the next thing is to create a scenario output. We'll go to the same place, but scenario outputs. And here we'll add a, we can just call this scenario output. And to set this, we're gonna call the scenario module and we're gonna create a return output module. And we're gonna pass the response from the agent here. And we'll save this. And this completes our setup for the sub agent. Okay, next thing to do is we'll activate this scenario and then we'll go to our main agent, manager agent. So we can call the sub scenario, sub agent. So we go to our agent. And as we discussed before, we can add a tool here. And this tool will be the sub scenario we just created for sub agent. And we'll call this, um, call this scenario to work together with the sub agents. Now we'll add this as a tool. And now the next thing to do is set a thread ID. So this is the thread ID for the conversation between ourselves and the manager agent. So it has a history. We can add just a random number here. Once you use a different communication tool, you can add the thread ID from that communication tool, for example, but for now this will do. Now we'll save this manager agent. We'll set it to run on demand as well. And then we can start testing it. So let's try and see if this manager agent works. So we'll add a manual message here for it. For example, we could ask, ask the sub agent how old it is. Now, if we save and run this, then it's going to contact the sub agent and it then comes back with a response to say, it seems that the sub-agent is requesting a password to proceed. So if we, if we have a look and see what happened in the scenario for the sub-agent, open another tab here, so we'll see that it was called by the main agent and it received a message of how old are you? And then it responded, please provide the password. Now, if we look at the response from the manager agent here, it says it seems that the sub agent is requesting a password to proceed. So this is a good sign in the case, it's what we expected it to do. So if we go to the sub agent and we see a one successful run, and you can also inspect here that it was called by the manager agent with the question of how old are you, which is here. And then it answered, please provide the password as we expected. Uh, you can also see here a thread ID that was created by the manager agent um, and has been passed on to the sub agent. So hopefully it's gonna continue with that thread ID. Uh, we'll go back to the manager agent. We can ask a new question and or message and give it a password. So we can say the password is Galaxy when we run this. We can have a look at the sub agent first. It had another question from the main agent. It got the message of how old are you? The password is Galaxy. Uh, you see that the thread ID is still the same, so that's also correct. And the response it has given is 42. We jump back to the manager agent. It's on, so the sub agent has responded that it's 42 years old. If you have any further questions or ask or tasks, let me know. So there we go. That concludes our simple setup of a manager agent communicating with a sub agent. So to recap what we did here, we created a manager agent scenario and a sub agent scenario. In the manager agent scenario, we called the manager agent with a message and a threat ID. Then the manager agent called the sub agent scenario through its toolkit using the scenario in and outputs. The sub agent sent a response back to the manager agent and the manager agent gave the response back to us. So there's one more thing to point out. Um, when we use this scenario return output, the manager agent scenario will only wait for a certain time before it times out. Um, if we open the settings here, it actually tells us here, the setting continues scenario on while agent is working. Now by default, that's set to no, which means this scenario is gonna wait for the sub scenario to finish before it continues to run. And it mentions the three minute timeout. 
Now to demo this, we can go to the sub agent and add a timer. We can ask it to sleep for three minutes. So more than three minutes, this is in seconds. So we would say 190 seconds, which is just over three minutes. We'll save this scenario. And when we run this agent again, let's ask it a question. And we run this main agent. It's going to wait for the sub agent to respond. Okay, so here you can see that the manager agent timed out after three minutes because the sub agent was taking too long and we instructed it to wait. Now to solve this three minute timeout issue, we're going to go to our manager agent settings. If we scroll down, we see an option here called continue scenario run while agent is working. By default, this is set to no, which means the main scenario, the manager scenario is going to wait for the sub agent scenario to respond. Now, the other option is to set it to yes. Uh, essentially what this does, it tells the manager scenario to keep running and then essentially finish. And it tells this sub agent scenario to send the response to a webhook instead of to the manager agent scenario. So in order to do this, we need to create another scenario where we set the webhook. So we haven't done that. So let's do that first. So we create a new scenario and we call this scenario manager agent response. Then we create a webhook here, um, a custom webhook, and we then add a new webhook. Once that's created, we copy the webhook address here and save it and give it to the manager agent. We put the webhook address here and we say save. Now what will happen if we call the sub scenario from this manager scenario? The sub scenario will send its response to this webhook in this scenario instead of to the manager agent scenario. Let's see it in action so it makes more sense. So here we can see the response that came back to this webhook. The manager agent is telling us what the sub agent responded, and it's also giving us the thread ID with the main agent should we want to use a communication tool to continue the conversation. So to recap, here's a visual of what we've just built. We have a manager agent and a sub agent with the exception that the manager agent now continues. And once the sub agent is finished, the manager agent sends a webhook response in a separate scenario. Now that you know how to use scenario in and outputs, how to use thread IDs and how to avoid a timeout by setting a webhook, let's look at a more practical implementation that I've built using multiple sub agents carrying out different tasks. Now let's have a look what a multi-agent setup looks like in real life. Here we have our main agent called Alpha, and I'm communicating with Alpha through Telegram. Now the advantage of Telegram is that you can use it on both desktop and on mobile. You don't have to use Telegram. You can also communicate with your agent through email, for example. Now let's have a look how this manager agent handles multiple sub agents. This is our sub agent scenario. What you see here is four sub agents with their own tasks. Now, before we go into the sub agents, I want to show you the scenario inputs that I built here. And there's one new one that you would see from our previous examples, which is the delegate input. And this tells the manager agent which sub agent to contact. Now, in the manager agents prompt, um, there is a list of sub agents available. And in this scenario input description, I've, ge I've given it um, four options to choose from. So it can only, as an input, give one of these four options. Now, this is important because I've put a router here with filters for each sub agent. So if we open this filter here, we say the web agent filter, the delegate, uh, that's the input from the scenario, should equal web agent. If that's the case, it means manager agent has called sub agent web agent, and then it will call this. Um, sub agent, which is a make dot make dot com agent. Now I won't go into much detail of how this all works per sub agent, but every sub agent has its own tools, which in turn are scenarios. So if we open the web agent, for example, it only has the tool to make an HTTP request. So this is a separate scenario. The calendar agent has the tools to retrieve items from the calendar. 
uh, to schedule events, to delete events, but also to search contact in the CRM. There's the CRM subagent, which has the ability to search contacts and add contacts in the CRM. Now, why have I given the calendar agent direct access to the CRM? This is just to make things simpler. Now, I could only give the CRM agent access to my CRM, but then the calendar agent would have to go back to the manager agent if it wants to schedule a meeting with someone and ask the manager agent to ask the CRM agent what someone's email address is before it can plan a meeting. If we set it up like this, then a calendar agent can just look in the CRM and quickly look up an email address while setting a meeting. So it doesn't have to go back to the manager agent. So this shows the power of modularity by make.com. Once you have the search CRM scenario as a tool, you can choose which sub agents have access to that tool. Now to conclude the explanation of this setup, this is our final scenario where the webhook gets received and the response is passed back to the same conversation in Telegram. All right, now let's see how it works when we send a task to Alpha. We have a contact person, John Doe, here in our CRM, and we're gonna call the agent to schedule a meeting with John Doe. Hi Alpha, can you schedule a meeting with John Doe on July the 1st? Now here you can see the calendar agent being called. And then the manager agent comes back with a confirmation that the meeting has been booked. We check our calendar on July 1st. We can see this meeting has been booked. Uh, the agent chose its own time from 10 to 11 and chose to use Google Meets, which I've set as a standard in the prompt. So there you have it, how to set up multiple agents in make.com. If you have any thoughts on how to improve this, please leave a comment below. Thanks for watching this video and take care.